Welcome back. As promised, this is part two of the rebuilding of the front brakes in the old Bedford bus or NFM series or SB3 bus. Now, uh, this wheel cylinder is the original one in the vehicle, so it's over 40 years old. I don't know what the inside of it's like, but I imagine that the bore in here is pitted. So we'll get into it and tear it down, but um, this is not, this type of wheel cylinder isn't just used on particular type of bus I own, it's used all over the show in Bedford series vehicles. So we'll get on it, on with it, and start pulling it apart. So they were the main holding bolts, lead screw on the side there. What we'll do is take off, these are your brake adjusters, and they have a thread in there. And as you adjust the brakes, it pushes the brake shoe out on that thread. Now these doesn't matter which end these go in, they both end up doing the same thing and they're the same length. So I'll give those a clean up, put some anti-seas on here to keep them free. And then we've got a couple of rubber grommets over the end here. Now these are the pistons near the either end here, which move in and out as hydraulic brake fluid is pumped in here. And that's what pushes out onto brake shoes. So we'll pop these clips off. That one's okay too. Just a little bit of brake fluid in this. So if we peel the covers off, that's been leaking past the cylinder and the little grommets actually kept the fluid in there so this was on its way out. I wonder what this one's like. That's the same. So these brake cylinders I pulled them out at the right time. They weren't giving me any problems but they were in need of a rebuild. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hose out. There's a copper washer under there. This is a 18mm on there, so I'm going to put this in the vise and hold it so I can actually twist this out. So that's just come back from the vise. And now that brake hose will unwind out of there. There we go. So those pistons have been definitely leaking by. So what we'll do is we'll get these out now, this little hole here, we'll put the bleed screw back in, that'll help block it off, and we'll put the air gun in the hole and pop the cylinders. That's one, two. Right, we'll pull those out and have a look at the bores. So now we've got the pistons sticking out partially. We can pull them out and have a look at them. They're not bad, I've seen worse. So the pistons look like they are reusable. We can recover those. Yeah, so those pistons will be fine. We'll put new seals in them anyway, because that's the best thing to do. And the bores. I'll have to give them an emery, emery paper them up, just see what they're like, see how much pitting is in there. But I suspect, feeling that, we have a few lumpy rough bits up and down on the bore, so that's why it's been leaking by the seals, these guys here. So that'll be half the problem we have. Got some brake clean left over from a job, so we'll use that just to scrub things out a bit. If you're looking for your toothbrush, you know where it is. So I've just got a bit of fine emery paper here. We'll scrub out these bores and see what they look like. Right, we've finished cleaning up the bore with emery paper and the verdict isn't good. We shine a light up here, you'll see all those black marks in the bore. That is pitting where moisture gets in there and rust causes grooves in the bore and that's 
not good. And what happens with those little pits, and you can feel them, finger runs down and stops on them. As the seal runs up and down the bore, it catches. And also, as the seal lip transitions over one of those pits, the fluid leaks and you lose pressure on the brakes. And eventually you'll lose your brake fluid because it'll leak out the end. And we know that because the little boots on the end were full of brake fluid. So this is recoverable. What we're going to do is I'll take this to a brake rebuilder and they have a fancy re-sleeving machine. So what they do is they bore out the centre and they fit a stainless steel sleeve. To, and that sleeve, the inner diameter will be the same diameter as the original finished size of this. So basically they stainless steel sleeve it and then they back drill through here to put the ports back in. And they dress the front surface there so you can slide your seals in without ripping or tearing them. And you've got a bulletproof brake cylinder then because the stainless steel won't rust, won't pit. And we'll clean these up, get a new seal kit and put it all back together and then put it back into service. While we're here we'll pop the seal out and have a look at it. So I've got a pick here. These are good and bad, they've got a super sharp end on them. The bad side is you can stab or scratch this running surface and end up with leaks or nick your seal, so they're not really that good. But it doesn't matter in this case because we're going to have to replace these seals. There we go. Now these are cup seals, I think they call them. Got two little lips there and a solid on the back. And they sit in here and when they push, the cup forces open onto the cylinder bore and onto the piston and stops any fluid getting past. These are standard seals that come in the kits you can buy. You'll probably get one at the brake re-sleevers. They'll just give me a kit as part of the rebuild. And if we have a look on here, it's a little bit hard to see, but I can see lines through here where it's been dragging in the bore with those pits. So this seal is buggered. What I've been doing is the last bit now, and that's cleaning up the pistons. And what I've done is I've dressed using emery paper the sealing surface where the seal lips sit on. Some of them have had a bit of pitting on them. This one hasn't been dressed yet. It might be a little bit hard to pick, but there is... Just some little micro pitting around here, so I just dress that out. And what I'm using is this piece of flat metal and varying grades of emery paper. And I'm actually, I don't have a, a lathe to clamp this in and spin it up, but basically I've put it in the end of the power drill and away I go. So I'll show you how I did that. Looks pretty good to me. So that's worked well. What we've done is I've gone and dressed the sealing surface on all four pistons. So they've got a nice smooth sealing surface now because they did have a little bit of pitting on them. And what I did was use uh, emery paper or they call it silicon carbide paper I think. And I started with a, a reasonably rough style of paper. I'm not sure what grade that was. 120 probably. Yep, 120, and then I've moved to a slightly finer grade, and then I do some polishing at the end with a nice, I think it's a thousand grade. That's it. Okay, so what we'll do now is we can clean up this mess and start assembling them. Yesterday I dropped off the wheel cylinders to get them rebuilt or re-sleeved, and today I've got them back. Now that's an impressive turnaround surface. So I've sandblasted them and gone and fitted stainless steel sleeves. And if you have a look inside here, you can see that we even cross-hatched the bores. So, what are we going to do? I'm going to actually paint these bright zinc, make them look nice and shiny, and reassemble them. Have a look at these shiny bits. I was just having a play around with this just for shits and giggles, and 
when these two pistons are in here, the gap between them works out to be about one and a half millimetres. So they sit just about touching. And if we have a look with one in there, you can see that there's a little bevel on the front here. So this piston, the edge of it, or the surface of it, is just about in line with the centre of that hole, or these holes. So there's only one and a half millimetres between the gap in there when they're in together. Another observation is the machining tolerance on this. These drop in nicely, there's no slack or wobble. And when I actually measure the diameter of this and the di inside diameter of that, it works out that's at about 0.15 of a millimetre clearance. So that's pretty neat. So what I'm going to do now is start assembling these, but for um, brake components uh, we use what they call rubber grease not just normal grease because the normal grease will cause these to swell but the rubber grease will allow them to assembly assemble nicely and we'll put rubber grease in areas where there is no brake fluid and that'll help with uh, lubrication keeping the moisture out and just general longevity so we'll get some rubber grease in here on our Sealing places. And on our seal. This should help things go together. Now, you've got to get these around the right way. There's a cut surface here. You want this facing towards, or the force of the hydraulic fluid pushes, so it has to push on this opening. So when these go on here, you want them sitting like that, so they can actually capture the hydraulic fluid. So we'll go through and, and do that to the rest of them, put the seals on, and put some rubber grease on there too. So that's not going to work, we're not going to get that seal past this lip very easily without cutting it or nicking it. So what I do is... I have a piece of stainless steel shim. This is about five thou thick. And I cut one end on a slight angle and make sure that the edges don't have any roughness on them because we're going to use this to wrap the seal up and compress it. So that'll get wrapped right around this guy. It'll compress the seal. And then you bring that up to here and you can transition it into the wheel cylinder without it getting hung up. Now, this can be more trouble than it's worth because you have sharp edges. So you've got to make sure no sharp edges because you'll nick the seal. And also you'll notice how this edge is on a slight angle. And the reason that is is because when it's wrapped up, as you push this guy down into the bore like that, this has a sort of reverse wiping action, so you're actually wiping along the seal that way, so you don't nick it. Where if you just had a straight cut, as you push this down into the seal, you're going to nick it. And then it'll slowly leak over time. So what we'll do is I'll wrap this up, compress it, we'll go over the vise and push it in. So I'll wrap the seal up. I'll try and make it look awkward. So that's all wrapped up in there. Now we'll move to the vise. So we've got our piston wrapped up like so. It's a little bit tricky to show, but we're gonna try and drop it in so you can see, something like that. And then we'll push the piston down like that. And it hasn't worked that well because the seal's still popped out on this side a little bit, but we'll just push that in with my finger around that lip, there we go, and that'll drop in there nicely now without nicking it or causing any problems. So I can't emphasize enough how, it is, how important it is not to nick your seals. You've got to be so careful because all you need is a tiny little nick and they'll get leaked by and then you just end up in a whole world of pain. Okay, so moving on, we're going to put our boots on the end of this now. These are a little bit tight so you just give them a good old squeeze and then hopefully you can get them 
to fit over the top. There, like that. And do the other side. So we've now got both our rubber caps on. So there we go. These two bad boys are now fully rebuilt and ready to go back into the bus. Just one thing before we go and install them, which we'll actually do the install on in the next video. Um, this surface here, just make sure this is nice and clean because this is the surface where your brake hose, or this end of the brake hose, will actually screw into the wheel cylinder. This end goes on to the Bundy tube, I think they call it, with the flare fitting on the other end. So, to gain a seal between here, really important this, between here and this surface, we use copper washer, like this guy. You can buy new ones, I suggest you buy new ones to suit, and then you want to anneal them to make them even softer than they are. So the difference between these two washers, this one is not annealed, this one has been, so it's gone an orange colour. So this one is much softer than this one. And the annealing process makes things softer. And if it's soft, it means it crushes up in here nicely and you won't get any leaks. So, how do you anneal something? You apply lots of heat to it. So we'll do one now and I'll show you. What we'll do is we'll heat it up. So it goes a red colour. And then we let it cool off. And you'll notice it's gone almost a grey black colour. If we put it down here, we'll have a close look with the camera now. So there you go, that's our washer that has been annealed. And you'll notice there's like a black surface on it, which is now all bubbling off. So we'll just scrape that surface off and you'll reveal all the nice freshly annealed orange copper underneath. And that's how you go and anneal a copper washer. And that concludes this video on front wheel cylinders for your old Bedford. So we've rebuilt these, we've annealed our copper washers, our hoses are all prepped. So in the next video we're going to go and install these and commission them. So thanks for watching, go have a look around for the next video. We'll see you next time. <laughs>